Okay, so I guess um, we should just start, thank you for doing this, with an uh, introduction. Yeah. Um, introduce yourself and, and your work at John Lee's, mm -hmm. just to, to give people an idea. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm Ruth Howard, and I founded this company, John Lee's Theater, that I'm now the artistic director of. And we've been around as a company since 2001, and with a number of years before that, unincorporated leading up to founding the company. We, we exist to um, uh, make art with people in places of Toronto and sometimes by the field to uh, tell all sorts of stories and uh, respond to various issues and themes that seem important or compelling or sometimes that they haven't been told or being neglected or buried. Mm -hmm. Respond to a sense of urgency. We work with people of all ages, all backgrounds, all cultures, all abilities, all levels of familiarity or newness to different kinds of creative practices, mm -hmm. and um, including hiring professional artists for different forms of traditions and um, enlisting volunteer participants to work together to co create. Right. Works of art in, uh, initially but often performance space, but not necessarily. Sometimes a quilt, sometimes a book, sometimes a film, um, sometimes a concert, sometimes a gallery installation, sometimes an audio walk, um, sometimes a theater production or a musical or a video piece, um, a kind of experimental video piece or a meal or a garden. Yeah. Yeah, it's really a very multidisciplinary. Very multidisciplinary. Practice, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and always has been, and it's become increasingly so. Mm -hmm. So, how did you first get involved with this kind of community engaged uh, artwork? Yeah, I kind of got involved with it or was drawn to it before it was specifically called that because mm -hmm. um, the terminology around community arts and then a bit later on, community engaged arts um, came in in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And um, my involvement in art with people and places came out of um, came out of theater theater design and theater creation was my background and my training um, and then I was also involved in activism social activism and uh, political activism when I was younger street theater uh, popular theater um, and then I was always looking for places to put those things together it was really exciting high caliber, interesting arts practice with something that would have a high impact, high social right. impact and involvement. And I, I have a tendency, I mean, partly from my upbringing, to invite people to do things together. I like that way of putting it, art with, with people and places. Yeah. I think there is now, and we're finding this with Arts Engage Canada, a lot of confusion around the different terms in community, yeah. community engaged arts, community engagement, Outreach, audience yeah. engagement, social practice, yeah, um, uh, relational art, or right. whatever, dialogical art, um, activist art for social change. There's another one I guess yeah. in there, you know. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of confusing. It is. It is yeah. So how I, it's difficult to parse all the different terms, but I think there is definitely a, um, a distinction between outreach and audience engagement and community engaged art. Yes. Um, so how would you see that? I do think so. And the other one to throw in there is um, arts education. The, the difference between what people call outreach and audience development um, and what people call community arts or community engaged arts, to my mind, is that, and as we practice it, is that outreach and engagement is usually it's around in, involving people so that they come and see the main thing. And the main thing is the professional show. And I, you know, so that's 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 fine too. Yeah, that's a good point too. But it's a different. It, it's it's a it's a strategy to bring people in to see the artwork that you're you know the main thing that you produce. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is you know what might get called community art or community engaged arts in the way we practice, where our main thing is doing it. So the art we're creating, it's not a strategy for something else to happen. It's a it's a an ingredient in the art. Community engagement, community engaged arts, the relationship and the, the journey is really important. Yeah. Like the main thing. Yes. Um, but there's a tendency sometimes for I think 
people to then think, oh, well, it's community art. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be as good. It's, it's not right. yeah, it's yeah, yeah. going to be as good. Yeah, I passionately disagree with that. Uh, I, um, I, I, at least, and if I didn't passionately disagree with that, I, I didn't do the work I did. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the trick in the work is to come up with a scheme and a process where it's really good because of that com the combination of people and the place where it happens to come. And it's not so that you would never say, oh, well, that was good. But of course, it would be better if they were professional actors because I couldn't quite hear them. And, you know, they weren't mm -hmm. so convincing, but they were, you know, they were community members. So and I'm sure they had a good time. Right. But to say, whoa, like, you, you know, so if you could say, oh, well, that would be better with professional actors, there's something wrong with it. Yeah. But I mean, it actually, you know, when you see something and you say, whoa, that was just amazing in this con, you know, that, that's how it should be. And you mentioned the artist guiding it. I think that's the important thing that some people who are new to this work don't realize that, that there is always a professional yeah. artist involved. That's really yeah. Cool. yeah, however broadly defined, yes, having a professional artist leading the work at the heart, guiding the vision is part of what makes it exciting and part of what makes it part of, that's actually at the heart of the collaboration. Or if it's community art, so-called, is because if you're in, if you're asking people to spend their volunteer time on something, and sometimes, you know, really uh, people, you know, impoverished people and people with a lot of other constraints, and so it's not, you know, it's not a light thing that they're giving you your time. Um, and you want them to have a good and meaningful and a transformational experience. You know, people can, that's what art can do. So if you're, you know, you're, you're short selling it, you're short, you're really not delivering what you ought to to those people if you're not taking the end product seriously is something that's going to be good because that's what, you know, that's what makes people then feel proud and appreciated and valued and inspired and yeah, all of those things. And the point is not to bring people into the main show, as we were talking about, that's sort of more outreach, but it, I think, can help people to realize or really transform transformational aspects of it. Yeah, and the point, bringing people in the main show, into the main show is a really good thing. You know, experiencing a wonderful word of art, work of art as a spectator or a witness or an audience member is is a you know is a worthwhile life experience. Like we're we're partnering with Soundstreams now, um, it's a contemporary music organization, and um, we created a companion piece for um, Code Vivier's Music for Desenda, which was their main stage concert, and um, and so from their point of view, it was it was funded through their audience and outreach part of the priority. Um, from our point of view, it was a commission to do something really exciting with our community choir and to take inspiration from that piece. So our piece was called Endings, mm -hmm. and um, we co-commissioned a young composer who could then have to create this short work and program piece mm -hmm. and, you know, responding to it. And so part of the development was that we played, we showed some of the video, listened to some of the um, music from before. So we shared all that with the choir and with our community members and with our artists. And um, the composer, and then uh, created our own piece inspired by, but it was our own piece. We did, you know, took, took some of the themes. It was, and that was part of the a kind of agreement with Soundstream. This isn't going to be an arts education piece for the Vivier piece, it's going to be something inspired by it. Like right. stand alone. And then we performed it in the lobby. I mean, this all happened within that week, so it was oh my gosh. But, um, and then our whole choir and our artistic team went to see. Their main show, music right. for Desenda, and really liked it. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and and it was it was you know it was not the kind of thing that you would think would be immediately accessible. Right. But for all of us, in, you know, having go through going through that process. Well, one we were there, they gave comps. None of those people could afford tickets. We took a bus to get people there. None of those people, you know, some people have physical disabilities, mm -hmm. mobility issues, would never have gone to it. Every music concert and sound streams would never have had that audience. No, it was really interesting feedback after, including when we were sitting in the audience waiting for the show to start. One of the choir members, oh, are they going to do our piece now? And it was so great because it's like, oh, like our piece is the main piece, right. and this one's kind of like our piece. Right. You know, it's an interesting balance, and as I say, our perspectives are different because for sure, for sound stream, I mean, it. it you know, the learning on both sides, right? Because they're still a, a concert producer, we're still a community arts company. Our, our kind of motives converge, but they're slightly different, but it's, it's an interesting experiment. And as I say, the, the fun, it's not, you know, we do like we get comps for, for the 
COC to the dress rehearsals, mm -hmm. or we get community tickets to the AGO, or we get you know other places. So we'll pay groups of community members mm -hmm. to main stage arts events. You know, often mm -hmm. that would seem obscure. Right. And my my experience from that is that most people like to go to most things if it's a good arts experience mm -hmm. and if it's challenging and you give you know you can do it for orientation or right for the occasion if they've never done it before they're likely to like it more mm -hmm. than people would feel a bit you know might feel a bit jaded with it you yeah know, people never been to the opera before even though they don't think they might like it you you know you welcome them and talk about it even if they don't love it all though though you know it's a it's a good experience it's a good experience it's a good experience so it's the, the barrier isn't so much oh the kind of this is elite, these are elitist art forms that people just aren't going to, most people just aren't going to get. The barrier is actually more basic. It's kind of geographical and economic and, yeah. and social. Yeah. 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 Feeling welcome. Feeling welcome. Yeah. Feeling welcome and having the meet together mm -hmm. and having a kind of, yeah, feeling like it's part of your world. And I think that's really important um, talking about this transformational experience that art can have um, with this kind of work, people being able to both take part in. Um, an artistic process and see a finished That's right. professional yeah. product. Yeah, and the finished fresh professional product might be the one they're taking part in. Mm -hmm. And I think um, it can then have that sort of immediate outreach effect that um, some organizations might be hoping for yeah. that they then can see the show, but it can also have a longer term, this person now appreciates art in their life. And will it can, that. but there's a big but to that, mm -hmm. and the big but is that like not everyone's going to become someone who can buy tickets. Yeah, so the economic totally barrier right. doesn't go away. And so the desire, absolutely, someone goes once, like there's a, and there's lots of examples, but another elderly woman who comes down to our choir for Etobicoke and almost everything we do now, every time I see her now, she says, oh Ruth, do you have any more of those free tickets for the offer? Or for the, you know, when's that going to happen again? When's that going to happen again? And I, I say, I'll let you know when it does. Mm -hmm. But I, there's no point saying to her, I know you love it, here's the Now Magazine, here's some things, why you buy it, you can go there, because one, she's not go there on her own, two, she's not going to go there on her own. It's just a hard thing, because we can only, if you're a ticket selling organization and you rely on box office revenue, again, people get kind of down on that, and oh, you shouldn't be counting clubs and seats and so on, but it's, you know, what, what the heck, right? It's the reality. It's the reality. Can't fault anyone for that, but it is a bit at odds with the, with the more kind of radical outreach and access. Mm -hmm. And what's the answer to that? More subsidy, more government support. Mm -hmm. People can get very romantic about it, mm -hmm. and they can also get very judgmental about almost anything in the arts world, right? And so the whole sort of, there's a sort of sense that it's, it's really vulgar to worry about money and yeah. tickets, and it's really not there. No. There's a sense that arts organizations have some kind of stability, which really none of us do. Yeah, we're talking about this balance between the reality of most organizations do rely on yeah. current revenue and you do need to get funds and seed, and then trying to do this kind of more radical inclusion, yeah. community engaged work. Um, how do you? Yeah, it, it is a real tension. That's this. Um, it is a real tension, and um, I'd actually I'd just be interested in talking more about it mm -hmm. with people um, without just you know as I say being. Either idealistic or judgmental about it. I mean, our solution to it at Jump Lease is to has been just to mostly ditch the box office revenue part. Of it. We're funded through mostly funding channels where they're happy to, you know, where they're looking at the social engagement. Not so much of that. Um, we can get away with that, anyway. but the reality is that more people don't have money than do have money who come and take part. And, and but but you know, here we are surviving, not mm -hmm. doing badly. What if everyone just didn't charge anything? Mm -hmm. And everywhere was donate if you can. Mm -hmm. And you know, donate if you can and everyone's welcome. Maybe it wouldn't make as much of a difference to people think. I think also part of the solution to while we're figuring this out and dealing with the model that we have, um, I think presenters and arts organizations have to take a little bit less risk if they partner with other organizations, and that's part of yeah. what we're trying to encourage yeah. is further partnership and relationship building. I, yeah, and I was actually going to say that that yeah. is another strategy that we're, you know, that's again you know, kept us afloat mm -hmm. for all these years, um, allowed us to revive is is what we get from partnership. If you're more <laughs> connected in your community, more rooted with the partners across sectors, and 
people who live there, there's potential for different kinds of support that might, that, you know, can compensate for what you might be losing in ticket sales if you're being a bit looser about how you let people come in with tickets. Mm -hmm. And it also can open up other kinds of other channels of funding that aren't specifically our channel. Right. And, um, and it has a lot of other benefits beyond funding. Oh, so there's tons of benefits beyond funding, but yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but funding is one small, small In the, the ground floor, we are paying rent, but we're paying full market value rent because through a, a kind of Section 37, they call it, but yeah. by, by, by deal with the developers of this new neighborhood and the Toronto Arts Council, who's actually your landlord. Right. Um, and just for people who don't know, the ground floor is the space we're in. Yeah, the ground floor is the studio. In downtown Toronto. Yeah, yeah, right in a new condo development neighborhood in downtown Toronto. Yeah. So we do pay rent here, but we are kind of benefiting for all that from a, a partnership and a reputation, which, you know, um, made the Toronto Arts Council prompted them to invite us and, and pick us through an application process to come to this space. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask you about that. Because Jumbo's has been based in various parts yeah. of Toronto and, and had built those roots and yeah. community connections. But you've also toured projects yes. um, across Canada. So how does that work and what do you need from a presenter? To go on tour to their place. Yeah. What we need from them is that they have a connection with people in partnership with us. That's the main thing. Do the outreach, but it's not even that, that they, that they have the people to work with. They have the relationships. Um, they have the relationships, whether, you know, in their own, whether, because there's not time, obviously, when you go somewhere for a week or so to go out and find the community center and the schools and the different cultural groups and so on and, and learn who's there, all that kind of advanced work that we do when we go to a neighbor, they need to have that yeah. there. And usually we need them to provide us with of some sort of that. Yeah. And I guess it goes with the rootedness, you know, someone on the staff who's, who, Collaborate with us in the planning and the hosting of it, but those are the most things. The most I, I, the relationships and the people and the community connection is the most important thing. Because if that was there and there was no venue, we could potentially you know, look it up and find somewhere. Yeah. Because so that they have the kind of some kind of prior connection and that they have some capacity to do something else. Mm -hmm. um, so that there's somewhere you know it's not just hi we're here here's our project bye bye. This is no easy and every then you can say, okay, you know, we're this is great, we were here with Commonweal Community Arts and we're going, but you know, they'll tell you about what other community projects they have coming up next, right. whether you like this a bit different, or maybe sometimes they'll even use, you know, take what we've done and this is gonna become part of mm -hmm. this longer project that they're doing. And that's yeah. a great point and maybe partnerships are part of the answer to this. I think this kind of community work often involves long term relationship building. Sometimes it's yeah. like a long-term project mm -hmm. and we hope that it carries on and it's not just drop in yeah. and do the same we need. And a lot of people, I think, struggle with the, the time and resources yeah. that that takes. So you've done some amazing, like this project you were saying, yeah. you said three years. This, this one took three years, but you know, to be clear, it wasn't full time for three years. Of it, course. Just, it just sort of, it went through a lot of phases and it's got, yeah, it's like these little squares, they're all by different people and they're all, you can see if you look, they, they, yeah, the problem was, but something that you've inherited that you want to pass on. Yeah. So the, the turtle and the center of the, the 13 uh, Ojibwe wheels was created by Rhonda Lucy, and so she made the design and then we transferred it on fabric and then lots of people beaded it. Mm -hmm. So, but they were working with her design, but they could pick their own color and their own way to do it. Okay. And then these words come from Anne's in our Talking Treaties project. They're from little bits of interview text from interviews about yeah. So, you know, it, it allowed for it would kind of resurface and go away over the three years, and then we'd bring it to different groups. And we, we do it, we quite often we do a sewing drop in here. So, mm -hmm. we take out the fabric art project and keep competing in four years and chat. And so, this was a sometimes it's good if it takes a long time. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's because um, it just allows more. I mean, sometimes in community arts, you're actually looking for a way for something to take more time, not mm -hmm. less time. It's just quite counter to the introduction. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're in the opposite mode, you know, if we have a deadline, but sometimes you think, okay, if this could take longer, some more hands could touch it, let's do it that way. But it's just that if your artwork is working with people, is is collaborating between artists and communities and people, you need to, you know, people need to be there. Mm -hmm. In fact, we've done touring projects with art on it was this was in North Bay, it was a Main Street Gallery. Because it was very street visible, 
we we could actually put a table out in the street and walk people in and we did a thing with like little teacups that we we got a hundred little teacups, put them all over North Bay with little signs saying, Okay, oh, we back to the gallery, <laughs> the Whitewater Gallery for a cup of tea and make some art. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was was really great, yeah. And um Oh, you know, not tons of people came out, but people did come who wouldn't have come. And because their aim was partly then people to walk into the gallery, because mm -hmm. who wouldn't have otherwise. It was probably the main ingredient of just a willingness to enter into it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, someone called me and said, could you come here for a week or three days? We've never done community arts before. We're a performing arts center or whatever, and we'd like to start something. And we kind of said, okay, well, you know, where should we start? Right. Well, right. Because because the, the desire and the curiosity is... The most important thing. Yeah, that's a great point. And it's a great way in for people to not feel yeah. intimidated to, yeah. to just try. Yeah, it's just an ongoing conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's, it's an interesting. We don't have a solution, but we're we're talking it through. Yeah, I think part out. of the way that there's never a solution. You know, part of it is just all of it. Really, is trying things. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like what I said about the terminology in practice, right? You try something and see if it seems like a solution. Yeah. Um, 